you know, for several years, does, does a lot better job than you and I do. And, and then she got to the coaching world, coaching under Brad Stevens for the Boston Celtics. Coach Cheryl Reeves with Team USA, and now she's, she's at Duke right now doing an unbelievable job building this program. Duke in their familiar blue. Toledo, it's gold rush week. Rocket teams have worn shades of gold all week long. Duke misses an early three. It's a familiar starting five for Toledo. All five of these players started most of last year. Wired, we talked about Quinesha Lockett is Toledo's leading scorer, just under 19 points a game. McConowitz does a lot of the glue stuff. Jess Cook really efficient inside. And Kara Goss hangs her hat on the defensive end, one of the best defenders on the ball in mid-major basketball. She delivers the first two points of this game. Duke for the second consecutive game without Taya Corisdale, who did not make the trip. So it's Celeste Taylor, Jordan Oliver, Lee Volker, Cheyenne Day Wilson, the reigning ACC freshman of the year, and the 6'6", Kennedy Brown. And that's Day Wilson with the first bucket for Duke. Kara Goss for Toledo. They started the last two ball games at home, knocking down threes. Got a backdoor layup on the first possession. Lock it, Aaron, there. Been a much improved three point shooter throughout her time in Toledo. Catch and shoot three for Celeste Taylor off the mark. Lock it with the long rebound. Duke has to get back and defend in transition. Toledo, a team that wants to run. Take us through your keys. Well, for Toledo, they got to stay connected defensively. Their, their double teams, their rotations have to be concise and on point against a much taller Blue Devil basketball team. Defensive rebounding can only give this team one shot, one shot only. Don't give them second and third chance opportunities. Off schedule points against a very good defensive team in the half court. you got to find other ways to score, whether that's at the free throw line, baseline, out of bounds. Opportunistic transition offense would be key for them, as we saw in their last ball game, and three-point shooting. They've only shot 23% from the arc so far this year. That's got to be better, especially here on the road where Toledo's an outstanding defensive ball club here at home. Kennedy Brown answers the Karagos three with a putback deuce. 5-4 in the early going. Karagos has all seven for Toledo. Kara Goss knocks down a three backdoor cut that time. You get a you get an up screen within their offensive set. Nobody home in the back end for the Devils. Blue Devils. Cheyenne Wilson has been the starter for Duke in the absence of Corusdale. Makes it rain from the free throw in her class last year for ESPNW. Brown, so dangerous as a high post passer at six foot six, can see over everybody. Taylor pulls up and hits. But Duke was able to read it, and that puts Simi McConaughey in a tough spot, guarding two players on the backside, and Duke made the right read and knocked down the shot. It really is pick your poison with this Blue Devils team. Here's Garcia off the feet from Goss. That's what she can do, a pick and pop play. Sammy McConowitz driving on DeJesus, trying to push that through traffic, and it's picked up by Celeste Taylor. Richardson on the run, count the bucket, and Justina King committed the foul. Duke has dominated their opponents so far this season. Wins over North Carolina, a t Charleston Southern, Davidson, and Texas A&M. A&M the closest of those four wins, winning by 19. Transfer from Texas. Ricks the second free throw. Lockett trying to go in a hurry, but met by Nia yeah, Heidi underneath. That's fine to Lanesha Brewer for two. Stand and watch is in to move and to give themselves a good passing angle to the ball handler. Nice job by Brewer there uh, on that last possession. And the mid range jump shot, too, is going to be critical for them to be able to pull up, take that mid range shot. Probably got a better chance of making that. Day Wilson takes it right back. Duke with numbers, McConowitz trailing the play, that's Ashlyn Jackson with a miss, the follow there for Elizabeth Balagoon. Lanesha Brewer, and another acquisition you mentioned earlier from Akron. There's a lot of starters experience, but they're going to be counted on here in the second quarter. The Toledo and foul trope. Here's Balagoon, that's a really tough matchup for Sophia Wired and Balagoon. And you stay in it until you get to create some momentum. Wired poked the pass away. Duke takes it right back. Here comes Reagan Richardson, fouled by Wired. Dude, it, it's yeah, it's the it's the block shots or the altered shots. It's the physicality, guarding the dribble drive. It's getting a deflection just to disrupt rhythm offensively for the opponent. They've done all that here so far as this game is 
Come on out here in the first half. It's a little just a single offensive rebound to this point. What to see cleaned up is the turnovers. A few too many in this first half are like I'm sure. Well, that's one way to try and score. Throw the ball through the basket in reverse. Maybe the only way Toledo is going to score at this juncture. And those are drives that result in a shot or a dump down shot on most nights. That nice footwork inside by Kennedy Brown. Both teams will be, be shooting the bonus situation on the next. Brown, goodness me. Toledo of nine in this quarter. Man, Garcia, her second. And just look for the open shot. And you got to knock him down with regularity, but not give up second chance points like you did right there. Body of the six foot six, Kennedy Brown. And that's her most nice job there, getting the ball to Jess Cook inside. for close to two and a half minutes. They get Richardson at eight points off the bench in the first half. Nice find to cutting Jordan Oliver. Well, there, then Slito compounds it with turning the ball over. Give the ball right back to the Blue Devils. There's Brown, seven inches taller than Lanasia Brewer. Spins and scores. Stay in alignment. It takes a lot of communication and repetition to have that be that precise. They've done a great job with that here today. And there have been instances in this game where the offense hasn't quite been connected. That has not been the case on defense. Toledo, the helmet is 27% shooting, and that's a friendly in the NCAA tournament should they get back there. Nice drive, Sammy McConowitz going around. Cut from Richardson. That's the second time there. The double team Kennedy Brown, if you want, but she's such a good passer. DeJesus off the other side of the rim. There's Kennedy Brown once again. In a lot of games this season, they won't need to be able to shoot the three. When you get players like Ashley Jackson that can do that, three on one leads the break, then leaves it for Vanessa DeJesus. Really excels on driving and either getting to the rim or pulling up, and neither of those things are easy to do against a team as big as Duke. Save right to Justina King, the Long Beach State transfer. Kick to Nan Garcia. That's her third three point make of the day. Toledo in trouble with size. Smart play, turned around and found Nan Garcia stepping into the three. De Jesus to a wide open Mia Heidi. Nobody rolled with her. Testing shots at one block in the afternoon, but we've also seen with her great passer. Out of that mid-post, slow-post area there, found a lot of teammates cutting to the rim for layups as well. But I'll see the game here for the Blue Devils on both ends of the floor. Has said that Duke's style of basketball is faster than what she experienced at Oregon State. Right on cue, that's Brown to set up Jordan Oliver for the layup. Again, Oliver's defender goes to, to double or, or try to discourage the, the post move, and Oliver that time was right behind it for the layup. King. Three-point shooting is not her strong suit. It's one of eight from downtown this year. Celeste Taylor digging it out of the paint. It's a Toledo team that, by their nature, they want to get to the basket and finish inside, and that is just made so difficult by the size and length. Lock it, drive, score. There, my The first time Trisha Cullip saw Jessica Cook play was in an AAU game back in 2019. Lock it, scoring it. Ah, Celeste Taylor saw the pass coming, will glide it to lay it in. Celeste Taylor guarding the wing. Got the steal and score. Lock it, finding Kara Goss. First point since the first quarter for her. You know, we talked with Coach Lawson about developing that chemistry and continuity with so many new players.
Chemistry and continuity is one of the reasons why Trisha Cullip decided to bank two scholarships for this year's team. There were two they could have used, but they decided not to as the end of the season. This is maybe another fourth quarter that Carol Lawson won't be too keen on. Lockett gets to the bench. Yeah, those are drives the rims with foul trouble couldn't get in the opening half. Been, still playing hard, being assertive. Get some shots to fall here in the, in the fourth. Richardson thought about swinging it inside, hangs up in the air, gets it to rattle home. And look to make improvements off of this game and continue to build towards your conference schedule. And of course for Duke, that game out in Portland against UConn, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. It's a big game for them, you know, because I know they didn't, you know, them pick seventh in the ACC seems a little low for me, and it's an opportunity to show the nation against one of the premier programs in the nation that, that you are better than that. And if they play, continue to compete as hard as they did today and defend like they did today, they're going to keep themselves in the ballgame and give themselves a chance.